Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at something a little bit different. This is made by Max Factory. This is the 172nd scale combat armor Dugram anti-aircraft pack mounted type. So I haven't built any of the Dugram kits before, but they seem pretty interesting. They're definitely very unique in the style of them. And one thing that I like about this one is the really cool backpack that it has. That's kind of the main feature of this particular version of the kit. And I love that how for the main box art here, they have just a picture of the back of the kit. How often do you see box art where they're just showing like the back side of the subject of the kit there without showing the front? It's just kind of odd, but it's a really cool thing because obviously it's highlighting the main feature of it being this really cool backpack. But in the background of like the main image there, we do have these smaller images where you can see some other detail shots. You can see the front of it there. Uh, what that's going to look like there. So you have some other front shots here included like in the background, but just for the main foreground photo of this, just have a photo of the painted kit from the back. And it looks really awesome. So this is once again from Max Factory, only going to be the second Max Factory kit that I've built, I think after the Strelitzia, uh, which was part of their Motoroid line. So this is going to be a new experience for me, building a Dugram kit for the first time and building a non motoroid Max Factory kit, so should be pretty awesome. I always like building something unique, so as always guys, as we get into the unboxing and subsequent review here for this, a big thank you to USA Gundam Store for their support. If you guys want to check out the kit for yourself on USA Gundam Store, I'll have the link to that down below, and you guys can save 10% off that and everything else on the website, of course, using the coupon code ZACORILIUS10, so check that out. Alright, so on the top and bottom of the box, we just kind of have the same thing here, but in this case, you can see look at the front side of the Dugram there. On this side over here we have a couple of sort of a little bit more of an action pose there, posed up as much as it can. I'm not sure how much articulation this thing's really going to have. It's not really going to be doing anything super dynamic I don't think. But we have a couple of detail shots here showing a detail of this weapon there on the shoulder which looks to be like some sort of missile launcher uh, I was gonna say. I should also say that I don't have any idea about the source material for this guy so Forgive me on that. Uh, the cockpit, which is there on the head, looks like that opens up, canopy there for that. You have the uh, cannons over the shoulder, you can bring those down so it looks like they're actually firing straight ahead it looks like. And then over here, that's with a different cannon on the back, so I'm not sure if that's included or if maybe that's from a different kit, maybe it's just highlighting the fact that you can swap backpacks with the different kits, or that is included as an option, which would be pretty cool, but I'm not sure offhand, we'll have to find out once we get the box opened up. Going around to the other side, it's formatted like this, okay, so we just have a closer up image here of the open head with the pilot sitting inside there, and then a nice big tall image there, pretty much the same thing what's on the front of the box, but just showing that there with the backpack once again. So let's get it opened up. Inside here, we've just got a bunch of runners, as you might expect. So we'll make our way through there, looks like we are going to have some polycaps included in here as well. And not the most colorful kit, but it looks like we do have a good amount of different colors in here. We've got different colors of gray and some red and some dark green there for some of those parts. Looks like we are going to have some water slides in here as well, let's take a look at those. Some nice looking water slides here for this, you just have some of the larger markings. Looks like this is for maybe uh, like the pilot's computer inside the cockpit there, so that's pretty cool. Some really nice water slides here for this, always nice to see those. And before we take a look at all the runners, let's just take a look here through the manual. So the front of the manual is basically just the same thing as the front of the box. On the back of the manual is our parts list here, so you've just got that all laid out there, including the water slides and everything. If we open it up here, looks like we got a little bit of story, background about this version of the Dugram there as well. A couple of like uh, design images there and some more information, statistics, and then just getting it into the construction. So it looks like it's all in color, sort of the parts aren't actually in color, but the rest of the manual is in color. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, the parts are just there in uh, black and white, so you just go through the construction here and the back just how to mount the backpack onto there and then on the last couple pages here the decal guide where to place all the decals around on the kit and then just some different uh, shots there showing some different poses and kind of our color guide over here sort of it doesn't look like there is actually an included official color guide for this but what we do have here is some different variants so here's showing the main color variant which we have on the all in the box art but then down here it's showing some different color variations here gray green mahogany dark green and light gray so some different color variations that you can make of this so that's pretty awesome that it shows you some different examples there in the manual. I like that. But for now, let's take a look at through all the runners. So like I said, we do have some polycaps here. This is PC1 in black. We've got two of this runner. And then we also got PC2 for some more polycaps here in black as well. 
Runner A here going to be in a little bit darker gray color and you can kind of start to get a sense of the scale of this. It looks like it's going to be generally about the size of like a small master grade it looks like. Runner B here as well also in that main dark gray color which seems to be it's going to be the main color for the armor for this. This one also we have two of this B runner. Runner C here in a little bit lighter gray slightly. This is going to be some different hand parts and some different detail parts. You can see we are going to have some different options for the hands it looks like. And then Runner D in a light gray color here. We got some parts for the cannons for the backpack. Also it looks like some thigh parts and some other detail parts around on the body. And the same thing here for Runner E. Just some of the lighter detail parts. We've got two of this E runner. Runner F is just this one single piece here for the pilot figure. Runner G here is getting into some other detail parts and backpack parts here in this very dark green color. And Runner H as well also in that same dark green color and we've got two of this H runner. Runner I is some of the detail parts in this nice color of red. Runner J is our clear parts for this you can see we have some different options on these and also on here we have a little bit of pre-painting. So these parts are in that kind of dark smoky clear obviously but you can see on this one part there down there in the corner has a little bit of pre-painting of some dark gray on there. It's going to be kind of hard to see on camera and even hard to see in person but it looks like as far as I can tell that that it does have some pre-painting on it. Same thing goes for this other part for the canopy over here so you can see the canopy on the far left over there has some pre-painting around the edges for that whereas the other options don't so if you wanted to paint that yourself you can do that but if you didn't want to you've already got that pre-painted for you there on that one part so that's pretty nice. Runner K here is a couple more parts in red and then finally runner L here as you can see is just going to be the main parts for the backpack and the different cannon parts on there as well. And just quickly taking a look back at the manual and now that we've looked through the runners it looks like it does give you the parts to make two different versions of the backpack here so it has the turbo sack which is the main backpack there with just the one single longer cannon and then you have the an armed anti-aircraft type sack which is the one that's pictured all around on the box with, with the two cannons so you will have the option whether you want to use that one or just the longer single cannon like that so that's pretty awesome that you have the option included with this anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and get this all built up put together and then we'll take a look at the kit how it looks just straight out of the box all right so here's how the kit is gonna look when it all comes together and if you guys didn't watch the live stream build of this you can go back and watch that I streamed the building process of this and it was a pretty interesting building process ultimately it came together a little bit smaller than I was expecting for one uh, but other than that it's all pretty much as I expected the construction not perfect there's definitely a good amount of seam lines on there which I'll point out here in a bit but some nice detail here and there as well and just overall not going to be like the best build quality compared to something like Bandai's putting out in the same day and age but with this kit you can definitely see that with a little bit of love it could look really cool and it's basically just the the style of the kit is what you what you want out of this kit you're not buying this kit for some amazing feats of engineering but going into the kit I think it's just that you like the style you like the look of it and so that's what you're going to be getting with this it takes it's going to take a little bit of work to get it really looking its best no doubt about that but there's definitely a lot of charm to it and it makes for a pretty cool kit in that sense so let's take a closer look at it and I'll show you guys some of the finer details option parts things like that all right so in the head you can see we got the clear part here for the canopy also the clear part for that camera lens which is one single part that you can see through the front and the back there of the head and we've got three different options for the canopy so this is the option that has the pre-painting around the edges of that so it's kind of nice that you don't have to worry about painting that part you've got the kind of tinted clear there it's in like a clear black and so you've got that but you will be able to see the nub mark a little bit there you can see like on the around the lower edge of the canopy there so the pre-painting is nice but it's not perfect because there's a nub right in the middle of that now there's two options for how you want to construct the head here with this option you have a poly cap in there which will allow you to open this up like that you can open that up and you can see our pilot figure is in there you're meant to glue it in place i haven't yet so it's a little bit loose in there at the moment but you can open this up and then there's this also this hatch here at the top it's kind of hard to get at and it's not really on a hinge but it's just on those two little pegs there so you could just obviously completely remove this like that or you just pop that out and then just place it back in for example this position like this so you just have that little single part opened up like that now our other option for the canopy there is using this piece here which is your kind of control panel inside there that doesn't use a poly cap it just has this fixed piece here and you have two options for the canopy now neither of these have the pre-painting this one is just one solid piece this one does also have the separate hatch there on the top but with these they'll just be fixed pose they don't have the articulation so this is just yeah, would be a fixed pose open one like that and the other version here would just be a fixed pose uh, just like slightly open like that so these are just if you wanted to have it open and fixed like that you don't want to have the poly cap you will have to do the painting around the edges of that though 
The head itself will just be able to rotate there as it is just plugged down into the body and then also these little bits here on the side little cannons or whatever those may be smoke launchers or something like that uh, can also rotate up and down those are just plugged onto a polycap peg just straight there into the side of the head now you do also have an option for that you can replace this one here on this side with what would be I guess our kind of tube missile launcher or something like that this just plugs onto the side of the head there like that that's also a pretty cool option that you have there. Then the, the torso and the waist are plugged together via a ball joint in there. So you can move that around a little bit forward and back, side to side a little bit. You can rotate that a little bit just because it's just on a ball joint there. As for the shoulders, this is also just on a ball joint, which is very similar to like a Bandai high grade, how the shoulder joint will kind of swing out forward like that. But then it's just going to move just on a very tight ball joint. There, this shoulder armor here on the side will also rotate up and down. The whole arm itself will rotate up to about 90 degrees there. Not really actually quite even 90 degrees. That's as far as it's going to get just mostly because of this shoulder armor is kind of getting in the way. Then the arm will rotate there at the top and you have a bend here in the elbow but it's kind of hindered a little bit by this part here on the side of the arm. So what you can do is actually rotate that. You have another point of rotation there below the elbow joint so you can get that out of the way. Then you can get a fuller bend here at the elbow to about 90 degrees then you can just rotate the hand here. The hand is just on a ball joint as well. You can see we have a closed fist here. We have a set of closed fists. The hand, the back of the hand is different. On this side it's like this. On the other side it's plain without the detail on the top of the hand so just make sure you're paying attention to how that goes together during the construction. You'll also notice on this side we have this additional sort of gun weapon here which is also pretty cool just attached onto this arm. You can't attach that onto this side. What you would have to do is swap this entire part because there's a, a hole in this part where that plugs in but you could plug that on either to the left or the right side. You just swap this entire part not just that single weapon piece. Down here these little bits of side skirt armor will move up and down a little bit. The legs as you might expect are just plugged on via just a ball and socket joint there so side to side movement really only going to be able to go out to there front not really going to be able to go very far just because of this design of the skirt section so forward and back we can go back plenty far but that doesn't really matter too much forward so really only going to be able to go up to about there unfortunately the knee bend is just really only going to give you about 90 degrees also there anyway it's kind of like a double joint it sort of seems like in the construction but you don't you're not really able to utilize the lower joint basically down here at the ankles, you can get a little bit of side to side movement there. Once again, it's just on a ball joint forward a little bit, back a little bit there like that for some just basic articulation there up underneath the feet. You can see like that. So just to point out some of the seam lines here on the back of the calf, you got a seam line there. On the front and back of the thigh, you got seam lines there. On the side of the torso, you got a seam line there. On the arms, fortunately, not really any seam lines at all. So that's pretty good. On the head, you've got a little bit of a seam line on the top of the head there. You can see like behind the camera, there's a little bit there. And then on the backpack, of course, we got some seam lines here on the top and then on the cannons. So as for the movement of the cannons, pretty much just these will rotate forward and back like that. So that's pretty much going to be all the movement that you get anywhere on the backpack. So they can go forward about to there. You can get that pretty much to 90 degrees perpendicular to like the upward state of the body there and then obviously back straight up like that. So some nice detail around the backpack. It looks good. It's not color accurate at all. So you're definitely going to have to do a little bit of painting on this. If we take a look side by side here, if we take a look at the instruction manual, you can see it's meant to have some blue sections on there and then be a little bit darker gray. This one is definitely in a lighter gray and obviously missing the blue parts. Before we look at the other backpack, just real quick, our other hand options, we have this weapons holding hand here for the left side but there's nothing to hold with this so as it is there's nothing really to do with this in this kit although I think you can probably use this with some different kits or if you wanted to have this holding something now unfortunately no holding hand for the right side we do though have a set of open hands for both the left and the right side that are pretty nice they just look like this and again this would make a nice like rifle support hand or something if you had a rifle for it but this kit doesn't come with anything what we do have for option weapons is just an alternate backpack that's pretty easy to just remove. You just pull this off and plug the other one onto there. And this has these kind of hoses there on the top of the backpack, which look like they're supposed to plug into the top of the torso, which they actually don't. It's just kind of like a faux look there with that. But this backpack, I think, looks a lot better because it has a lot more color separation. You have the dark green body and then these gray bits here, here, red bits here and here. And then the main cannon, once again, a seam line all the way down the top of that. 
this main cannon is also looking pretty cool. Now, actually, now in the manual, this cannon looked like it was longer than the main backpack, but they're actually right about the same in overall length. It's going to be slightly longer, but not really all that much. So I actually really like both backpack options. I love this anti-aircraft backpack here, but the turbo sack here also is pretty cool. I like the details of this as well. So we'll definitely have to keep one of these for a kit bash or something. And so while putting this kit together, I definitely noticed that the construction of it, just the overall quality of the build was, like I mentioned before, not on the same par as what we typically are used to from Bandai. So there was just like the edges had just like not a bunch of flash, but the edges weren't super clean. You have like some kind of sharp edges. So definitely some sanding of this is going, definitely going to be necessary just to get everything looking like nice to get the fit of everything just looking perfect. And I had some trouble with some of the poly caps as well. This has just the symptom. I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience. If you've only built like modern Bandai kits, you probably never have had this experience, but definitely older kits and typically kits from smaller companies like this. The polycaps, when they're not perfect, they can be a big pain in the ass. When the polycaps don't fit in there perfectly, uh, you're trying to force it in there or you have to trim the polycap a little bit just to get it to fit. So I definitely had that issue with this kit. A few of the polycaps definitely gave me a headache, gave me some sore thumbs while I was trying to put them together. But all that said, when the kit is all put together like this, it actually feels super solid. It's a very solid feeling kit. All the points of articulation are nice and tight. There's nothing that is like very loose. I don't feel like any parts are gonna fall off of this. There's no loose parts or anything on it. So it's a super solid kit at the end of the construction process. So it was actually very satisfying in that sense. All right, and then real quick for a size comparison, here it is compared to your standard HD 144 scale Gunpla. As you can see, it's gonna be coming in just a little bit taller, barely squeaking out to be taller than that. And now keep in mind, this is in 170 second scale, so it's in a completely different scale. As in a 170 second scale, Gundam would be somewhere between master grade and perfect grade size. So you can see it would probably be coming, if they were in the same, the same scale, probably coming up to like about the waist or something of a Gundam. But while the kit is not very tall, it does have some nice bulk to it there. But that is going to just about do it for my review here of my very first experience with a Dugram kit. Hopefully this video was interesting and informative for any of you guys who are maybe interested in this sort of thing. This sort of a little bit more old school style robot here. And just something different if you were looking for a change from your typical Gunpla kits. Hopefully this is something that you guys found interesting. So thank you very much for watching. If you do have any other questions or comments, of course, you can feel free to leave those down below. Overall, I think the kit is pretty awesome. And I think if you're into this sort of thing, you'll definitely enjoy it. If you guys want to check out the link to USA Gundam store down below, just so again, a reminder that you can check that out. You can save 10% off everything on the site there using the coupon code there down below, Zakorilius10. So as always, just thank you to USA Gundam store for their support as well. So again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.